we are certainly in an era that could arguably be described as the golden age of open-world action-adventure RPGs. Over the last five or six years, the genre has gone from only being created by the best of the best developers, with the most amount of money and resources available to them, to now a lot of mid-tier and even small developers are taking on the genre and doing interesting things with it on nothing but the fuel of their ambition to get them over the finish line. Before we go ahead, a quick request. We upload new videos every single day, and your subscription matters a lot. So, please consider subscribing and enabling all notifications by clicking the bell icon. With that out of the way, let's begin. Now that we have so many great open-world RPGs and a handful that didn't quite make the mark, most developers who are worth their salt and are paying attention have a pretty good idea of what elements work in the genre and what elements do not. Gotta get in position. Here it comes. Attack! Fall Watch the striders! Ah. It's driven them mad! So, the blueprint is not hard to figure out for those who really want to make their own. As a result, games like Project Ragnarok are starting to take the stage or at least share the stage with the horizons of our time. And that is a very good thing for fans of the genre, as it means all of these developers will be competing with a wider array of other projects in order for us to buy their games, and that will result in better games across the board. Project Ragnarok seems to be taking this very seriously, as the team behind it are certainly aiming high for their upcoming MMORPG project. At this point, we don't know a whole lot about the game just yet, but from what we can see of gameplay trailers that have finally been released, it is a certainly gorgeous game, and a feast for the eyes with lots of bright, saturated colors that might remind one of Immortals Phoenix Rising at first. In fact, it might continue to remind you of that game with its Norse mythology setting that of course has a lot of crossover appeal with the Greek mythology setting. From what we can tell, it definitely seems to have an emphasis on expansive exploration, fierce combat, and traversal, which are all, of course, pillar components of any open-world RPG worth its salt. We see that the game is probably going to revolve around a handful of different main characters, all of which likely will have emphasis in different areas and drawbacks as well that will need to be balanced out by the player through the game's various progression systems. What those pros and cons are, and what those progression systems are, we'll have to wait and see. But the fact that they are taking a balanced approach with different characters in an effort to accommodate different types of players is a good sign. We don't know much about those characters yet, but hopefully we do get some good variety there. As far as the overall structure of the game so far, we do know that it will not be based around the typical daily mission systems that we often see in mobile games, but rather your powers and equipment will be gradually leveled up as you use them through the game's story mode, which will feel much more like a AAA console RPG than anything you would typically find on mobile platforms. Something else you may have noticed from the footage that has been released is some visual cues feeling reminiscent of 2018 smash hit God of War. While Project Ragnarok is certainly doing its best to keep its presentation free of gratuitous violence and gore, the combat itself and the assortment of creatures all do seem to have a certain amount of inspiration from Santa Monica's soft reboot, and that's certainly not a bad idea. If you're going to borrow ideas, borrow from the best, I suppose. The developers have also pointed out that the game's dungeons will be randomized each time you go into one, and the criteria surrounding boss battles can also change by them mixing different situations with different goals, so that should be a good way to keep players who the game clicks with coming back time and time again. The game is reportedly going to start off as free to play on mobile devices, which I was a little shocked to discover after seeing how good everything looks and how large the world appears to be. But the developers have been very clear about wanting it to have console releases as well. They're just focusing on the mobile release at the moment. It appears that the game may very well be going the Genshin Impact route by eventually having versions across all platforms as a free to play game. But with the mobile launch presumably being first for Project Ragnarok, 
that could give them valuable extra time to gauge fan interest, take in feedback, and then get a great port for consoles later with more bells, whistles, and improvements thrown in. Hopefully we can see some cross-play functionality there as well. But of course, we'll just need to wait for more information to surface before we know for sure what the long-term strategy is for this game. All we know for sure is that mobile platforms are the main priority at the moment. A beta is also reportedly on the way, so hopefully we'll learn more from that, and when we do, we'll be sure to update you straight away. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.